Hey you guys, this is Nathan back with another video. Today we are looking at Photoscape X and editing some photos from a recent trip of mine to North Head Lighthouse in Washington State. This lighthouse is actually the lighthouse that is the center point for a book that I wrote back when I was in high school, kind of my senior year project. I wrote this book and that's the location of it. It was an incredible process to learn about the lighthouse and everything so it could be kind of the focal point of the book um, as it follows the life of a 15 year old girl named Joyce who has a love for music and just a passion and it kind of tells her life story uh, just like two or three years of crucial time in her life as she's trying to make it big as a musician so uh, or a violinist so with that being said I've been wanting to go to this lighthouse for like five years so I finally got there um, and I got to take tons of photos. We're going to look at like 50 of them today and see kind of what I was able to shoot. And then also some tips in Photoscape X about how I would edit some of these and how I would look at some of these. So let's begin. We're going to start with the very first image. So uh, this is kind of just an image of out in the ocean. There's not much going on there. Uh, we're going to skip that one. The other one looking down, not much going on there. We've got this one here, which is the first image that we're going to look at and edit. Uh, so many times when you take photos of something, you don't get the close up or the detail. Um, think of it like um, like this. Like I was looking at changing my profile picture on my Facebook um, to say, hey, I want an image of me and my wife. And right now. Um, I was like, hey, I want to do one from our wedding, you know, back two years ago because our anniversary is coming up and all that. So I was like, okay, cool. The only problem is in the different photos that we have, there are not a lot of them where it's zoomed in super close. So it's like headshots. Instead, it's more wider out. You got to get the details at times. So in this shot here, there's actually a good, uh, a good way to be able to show off some of the details of this lighthouse, of the structure. So what you could do is you could uh, either save all of this or you could crop in. Um, cropping in can make it easier because some people just won't zoom in. But instead, what you could do is say, hey, if they're not going to zoom in, I'm going to uh, crop something in that's pretty close up so they could really tell some of the details of what this building looks like. So then you can see the unbelievable stonework on the, on the lighthouse. You got the stucco, you got the roof. Everything there, really nicely done. Just like the stonework around the windows, super amazing. Um, old artwork and construction is so cool. <clears throat> so in this case, what are some things you could do to edit this image after cropping it and kind of knowing what you're wanting to use it for? What could you do to enhance the image? So to start, what I would do is I would remove anything that is taken away from the image. So. Um, there's actually some construction going on on part of the lighthouse buildings. So they're working on construction on that. <clears throat> so uh, those things are work being worked on. If we're going to crop in and we're still leaving some of the scaffolding, it would take away from the image. You can do two things in this case from my perspective. You could either, well, you could crop in more. But if you want to try to remove it, what you could do is you could go over here to blur. You click blur and you can go over to that section and you could just select that scaffolding, that stuff that's kind of in the way. You can just go over that section and you can just blur that out of the image. So that would help to make it not the focal point and you could really still look at all this detail and it'd be really cool and you can adjust the strength of how much you want that blur you can make it pretty strong if you want to if you wanted to do a different trick to try to remove something what you could do is you go over here to draw and because it's such a gradient on the backdrop there all that you'd basically do is you'd select a color in there and then you'd be able to basically draw it out so basically i just go over here and i could draw that that stuff in the image out. And yeah, the edge is gonna be a little bit tough to not cut out too much or anything like that. So uh, we'll see how that goes, but those are two different options to remove parts of the image that you don't want. 
um, so you can have the main focal point on what you want. Also, if there's something that just doesn't look quite right, um, so like if I zoom in here, there's the part of the roof here, um, and there's some red paint or just paint that's come off and you're showing this red. Um, if you want to take that out just to make it look better, now if you're like the construction worker on this project and you're sending a picture to your boss, no, it's not an ethical thing to do, but if you're just trying to make the image look a little bit better, uh, so it maybe looks better in a portfolio or something that you're trying to curate to say, hey, here are some photos that I'm able to, that I've taken, edited, and here's the final product. What I would do is I would edit out anything that's gonna look, um, you know, that's gonna take away from just, hey, you know, here's my work. Um, so what I would do here is I would actually go into the color tab. So you have edit, go to the color tab, go down here to mask, and then go and select those different sections that have that red paint in it that's kind of annoying or anything like that. <clears throat> and then the better understanding you have of photo editing and different sliders is gonna help you in these processes. When I was messing around with it earlier, I found that turning that saturation down really brought more of a gray tone to those red uh, spaces and really helped to hide that what was going on there. You could do it in different ways. Like you could try to say, oh, I want to darken this. But then you get these dark spots that don't look very pleasing. So in my case, saturation ended up working out really well. So it depends on what you're trying to remove or cover, but that's what I would personally look at. If not, clone stamp might be your way to go or draw could work as well. So. Uh, you have that, um, uh oh, I actually, did I do it? No, I accidentally left that there. But yeah, the best version of this is probably, in my opinion, is to blur this and then uh, color tab that stuff out. So we have that, looks good. So that's the detail image there. Uh, next one, we have this, a sign, where text is gonna be very important. You can keep that stuff around it if you think it's gonna be helpful, uh, but you could definitely zoom in more. I tried my best to get this as straight and level as possible, and I think I did pretty well. If you ever do want to get very particular about how to straighten something, what I would do is hop into the editor, and then over here on the corner, uh, and let me move my, my video here. Over here on the grid, you can go and you can select different lines, and that's super helpful to be able to see, hey, is this all lined up perfectly? Oh, do I need to adjust something? If there are adjustments needed, your friends are the crop tool, the straighten tool. So crop, yep, you have straighten, good. You can adjust that and straighten in different areas. <clears throat> then the one other thing is in adjustments, not adjustments, in transform uh, transformations. <clears throat> um, let's see, you can go to perspective and basically in perspective, you can go and hit, uh, basically do some adjustments on like a vertical or a horizontal look. If it looks skewed in one direction or something, that can be very helpful. So definitely check those out. There's some crazy stuff in the transformation stuff. I haven't made a ton of videos on it, but like you can make like a circle um, or like some cone shape or like some really just random stuff, but it's pretty neat. Uh, definitely check it out if you haven't already but it could be some cool graphics to look at. All right, so enough of that. We can slide me back over here. Cool, let's continue on. Um, uh, we've got, oh, uh, one other thing I want to note with this image, basically there's times where like I will submit images to like Google Photos and different stuff for like a national park or some kind of restaurant or something like that. And many times for an image like this, it's important to just make sure the text is as big as possible because sometimes it's hard for people to zoom in. Cropping it in, saying, hey, I do like the surrounding stuff and things like that, but if it's going to make it harder for the people to read what it actually says, maybe it's something there where you zoom in and you, you crop in so you can make that text really good. And yeah, feel free to really adjust the colors and stuff to really make it stand out. Um, even if there's some crazy stuff, you can go to adjustments and go down here to document, uh, enhance document. And there's some different stuff in there that you can use to really help make the text stand out. If the text is just absolutely the main thing in the image that you're trying to remove. Pretty cool stuff there. So uh, we got that taken care of. 
Um, if you're looking at this and you're saying, hey, why isn't Nathan saving some of these and different stuff like that? It's something where I think I'm gonna take a deeper dive on these images, uh, potentially in Lightroom and Photoshop, uh, just so I can work with the raw images more. Um, so uh, this is showing it from the Photoscape X perspective. Here's an interesting one. I love the colors on this roof here. I think it's a, some kind of a copper uh, look and it, I just think it looks really beautiful. All right, so then other photos here. Here's what happened. It was a really hazy day. I couldn't get great photos of the lighthouse itself um, off the bat. So this haze is really tough. And the thing is, um, in the in Photoscape X, there is uh, in, is it effects? No, it's in adjustments. There is a dehaze in here. Let's see. Dehaze, where'd it go? Where did it go? It's hiding from me, guys. Do, 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 do. There it is, dehaze. Basically, you can go over here and hit dehaze, and it'll try to take away some of the haze out of the image. Unfortunately, it's not like super perfect or anything. Really, what you need to do is just wait for that haze to lift. And thankfully, in my case, it did lift. Uh, but yeah, definitely try that tool out if you are in a pinch and you need some help there. So I did wait, and the haze did lift, and that was really good. Um, but what happens is when you can't take photos of something because there's haze or fog or something like that, what you're going to want to do is look at other possible photos you could take. Like in this case, I took photos of uh, some of this different stuff where it's talking about like, oh, the lighthouse and Cape Disappointment and Baker's Bay, stuff like that. Taking different images of those were actually really cool um, to have some different photos of what it is, but then also getting a really wide shot of everything there as far as what it looks like when you walk up to the place. A good establishing shot there, a nice wide shot. Um, then uh, over here, I uh, was taking a look at one of the benches, and this was dedicated to some of the light keepers over the years. Um, for in researching my book, I looked at um, lighthouses and caretakers and stuff, and it's something where a caretaker for a lighthouse is called a light keeper. I think it's just a really cool analogy. Uh, keepers of the light is the quote there. And um, for me, as someone who loves teaching and loves sharing uh, what I know and what I've learned and what I've experienced, it's something that I love the thought of being able to share light or share information, knowledge, wisdom to others to help encourage them in their walk, um, help light their path. You know, uh, So that's kind of just an inspirational thing that I thought of um, as we were doing this. So you can see this, tons of haze, awful, you wait about a half an hour and boom. You went from haze to, you can actually see the ocean now and you can actually see everything as nice and clear and you can really look in at some of this stuff. So um, some of the window work, some of these different things. It's awesome. It's not like a super detail shot or anything, but it's just a nice clean shot there and something where it's something where you could then do a lot of work in post to be able to brighten things up, bring some different um, a style to it or a flair, just really clean up the image and make it look amazing. So I'm super excited to jump in and make a full video on editing images, whichever image I decide on, which I think is the best. Uh, there is some stuff in this image which is kind of distracting, which would be this stuff here on the side. You could work to Photoshop or edit that out. It would take a lot of work, but I would love to, I might actually throw this up to a one of my Photoscape X groups. There's a Photoscape X group on Facebook. May I send this in and see what they could do to remove it? I'd love to see the process that they take. They're very creative out there. Um, other shots, you know, looking at it from, you know, an up and down perspective, very neat. Um, Let's see, here's another shot that has that detail in there where you can really zoom in and see just the incredible stone work that they have on the side of here. I love the fact that the lighthouse is very much shaped like a pond and resembles a pond. I think it's really cool. Um, just some other stuff in here. This one where you get to see, it's definitely more of an abstract photo where it's like, hey, if you wanted to put text on the side here, you have this here, I think it'd be really neat. Um, to use that and yeah you probably brighten it up a little but it's pretty cool uh, different places where uh, the main section of the lighthouse and then some of the other parts branch off uh, photo of my hand 
next to the stonework, you know, just different shots there. Um, different historical markers uh, that are at the place, just getting some close up shots of that. Um, more photos of stonework. This is one where it definitely looks uh, like it's not straight. If you go over to the straighten tab, you're able to probably get in there and uh, straighten this up a whole lot more. But yeah, just a little straightening can go a long ways to really making that good. And then cropping it in such a way that you end up with a similar amount of free space on one side versus the other. Get that to where it needs to be. Figure out where you want to do it, what you want to do with it, and then you're good. And remember those grids and things if you're wondering. So if you're saying that that's a center line that you want to keep, yeah, you could probably make that happen. It just goes back to how are you cropping this in um, and all that. So definitely take the time to figure out what you want to do with your different images. But straightening, I think, is something that I really enjoy um, with that. Uh, and we'll get to some images where I style some of them. Um, here's one which is really neat. There's some haze still in the trees over here, but just a really nice, real pretty image there. You know, you look at some of the different film effects just to kind of get an idea of what you could do with the image. Um, but yeah, there's just so many neat photos there or neat possibilities there. Even this one looks really nice comparing to the original. This one just brightens things up a little bit. I think the earth tones are really good and takes away some of that just blue in the sky and makes it more white. Um, I'd still want more of that blue in the ocean. Uh, but yeah, I definitely should make a video sometime about how to remove um, a sky and then put a different sky in. It's just challenging in different lights because like in this case, um, because there's all these trees that would be interacting with the sky, it might get pretty complicated. So we can go from there. Uh, here's an image that I did wrong. I took this photo wrong. I took this photo and I this photo I took correctly. Let me show you the two differences. This one, everything looks nice. Um, and if I crop it in a certain way, it could be good. Here's the thing that I did wrong. You know, this has the established in 1898, the longitude, longitude of the location. But this is what I messed up on. This little peak of the building, I messed up on big time because I didn't shoot up enough to get that top little part of the image. I could go and add that in. Um, and there's different ways to do that. I can make a video on that. But I left too much on the ground. Too much on the ground. Didn't get the full amount of the image. And I didn't get that top part. So unfortunately there, this photo though, taken correctly in my personal view. Uh, because there's space up here at the top. It's actually a it's a, just a normal amount of space. And then down here is a normal amount of space between the window sills. This looks good to me. And something where you could easily uh, take out this scaffolding stuff because you have a good background um, in the mountain or the hills behind you. You could definitely take that out pretty easily. It'd be a pretty good photo to take and just looks uh, symmetrical, parallel, looks good. So I'm really happy with that image. Um, other ones like this one, looks like I got that one pretty well straight when I took the photo, looks good. Here's some of the ocean, stuff like that. More photos of the lighthouse. I like this one because it has the lighthouse in there. It's not keeping much of that uh, construction in the corner. Off into the distance. Um, looks really good. And, you know, it's just saying that there's so much possibility with an image like this. Because basically, edit to where you want it to be. Or we could do something really creative sometime if you guys are interested. Because there's, like, different light sources you could give uh is it light or spotlight yeah different stuff where like you could change this you got angle yeah we'll change the angle for sure aspect ratio yeah we'll make it real tight bring it in here need that angle to be a little different but yeah you could give it oh whoops i am so sorry <laughs> it was looking so good too and then i just totally messed it up um but the thing is based on how you want to do it. And you can change that brightness and stuff. But like you can make it look like the lighthouse is actually turned on. Um, and you can change that color tint to have more of a, uh, more of a glow to it. 
uh, you know, you have that, and then you adjust it to be this like ominous looking thing. Um, but no, there's different things you can do with it. It'd be really fun to mess around with the image a whole lot more for you guys. Uh, but yeah, just really happy with that image, giving you enough space. Make sure to be shooting wide enough um, so that you have that flexibility later. Other shots like this one, absolutely love this shot because I use this as my phone wallpaper for the longest time. Um, and the reason why is just because it looks so good. You got nice uh, texture there at the bottom, straight up and down, super solid, looks great. Crop it in a little bit to take out this thing on the side, the construction on the side, you're good. Uh, other stuff, just taking photos of myself with the lighthouse in the background. Um, there's some times where you have an image where you're in focus, um, and, but then the object behind you isn't in focus or other times where it's vice versa. For me, I wish that uh, sometimes I want bokeh in other times where like in this case, I wanna see the detail of the, the lighthouse as well. Um, you know, there's different adjustments and things you could do. One thing that I would almost encourage uh, for you to think about is just to shoot at a higher f-stop. Um, you have the different camera settings. And if you shoot at a higher f-stop, you can make that, uh, that distinction between the background and the foreground not as drastic if you're wanting to have something where there's less bokeh involved. So this one where there's still some detail in here versus uh, in my face, something where you can keep some uh, some perspective on both sides. But yeah, uh, just be careful because sometimes when you shoot a high f-stop, there's different things that could go wrong. Another option, if you were looking at it from an editor's perspective, what you could do is you could take this image like this you, um, and you can say, I want to edit this image. Cool. All right, you can edit that image. What you could do is you go over here to an image where you are in focus and you could say, hey, I actually want to take that image there that's in focus, drop it into the cutout tool in Photoscape X, go over to like the lasso tool, go over here, select yourself, invert mask. Uh, so you're over here. Um, and then what you would do is like magic erase, take out the stuff that's unnecessary that you don't want in your image. Um, and you wouldn't necessarily have to take it all out because it's gonna be similar either way. So maybe you even would leave some in. It could work out either way, either cut it out perfectly or cut it out not so perfectly. Um, but basically what you could do is or I'm, I'm kind of getting confused here. Uh, basically what you can do is go to copy to clipboard, hop over to editor, then you can go over here and you can hit paste and you can paste that in and you could drop it in over what you have. Now in this case, it does look way better to actually crop out all that stuff. So we're gonna crop all that stuff out, which is all good. Then you go to like copy to clipboard, hop over here hit paste, drop it in, cover yourself up. And sometimes covering yourself up can actually be a lot more challenging than you might originally think. But like you can crop that in. And as long as you cut yourself out pretty well, you crop that in. Um, and we'll just go over to insert layers, merge and cut that out. You could then end up with a picture of yourself that looks good, sharp, and then you could have what's sharp in the background as well it could work out really good. So definitely keep that as a reminder when you're working on those different images. You could borrow from some, take from another, and make it all work. I think for the photo of this, uh, the cover for my book, we have one photo here, which is the ground and the lighthouse. Then you have another photo, which is the water in the background. And then you have another photo, which is the sky. All those things are three different photos. And for like something where you're like really wanting to do a really good job with the project, um, you are gonna probably take a lot of effort into editing and working on stuff. So feel free to have that in your mind if you need to make those edits, because sometimes the equipment that you have just isn't capable, um, and sometimes mashing it together uh, can work out really well. So you have that, good, cool. All right, other images to take a look at here. Here's some images of me just sitting out in front of the lighthouse 
as centered as you can get looks great. When you're taking photos of yourself, just remember stuff like, hey, have you combed your hair? Have you shaved in the past day or two? Like, we were traveling across the country and doing crazy stuff. Like, I didn't have time to do that stuff. But at the end of the day, would I have liked this image to look more professional? Yes. It does look professional? Yeah, not really. And it's okay. Now that's fine. Um, with an image like this, it looks great. It looks fine. Um, and I think cropping it almost is unnecessary unless you really want it to be a picture of just you and you're the focal point instead of like, hey, I'm here at this lighthouse. I'd f crop it like this if it's more a picture of you, more like this if it's more like, hey, I'm here at this lighthouse. So kind of think through that. Um, photos like this one, you know, looks really nice, really centered. Um, do I keep my hand in there? Maybe, maybe it takes away from the image. Um, but yeah, so anywhere I'm just, I just was so thrilled to be there. I just had to take so many photos, a uh, photo like this, nice, sharp detail as far as on me. And then you got everything else in the background, a nice solid image. It just depends on what you want to use it for. Here's an image of a walking trail. This looks like just a normal photos that it's being taken. Nothing too crazy. The way that you would make this photo look better is like in the editing and stuff, maybe there's a way to make it look more dramatic, give it that mood or that feel that you're wanting. And then maybe it's something where you say, hey, do I want it to sy like symmetry saying, I want to crop this in just a certain way uh, that it looks really good, like it's gonna be this Instagram post or is it something where it's like, no, make it look more like a casual shot just depends on your style and what you're wanting to do um let's see a couple more images here before you wrap things up uh here's the caretakers houses i thought that was really cool here's a photo of myself um what the challenge is here is that i don't have much light on my eyes um and stuff like that there's different times where i'm looking at these photos and i'm like whether it's getting a reflector, like a, a basically a big circle thing that reflects light and bounces light back up to your face or some kind of a flash or it's just a, a light that's just on at all times, like a video light on your camera. Um, like I've been making some tutorials on like uh, there's a tube light that I just made a review on and that could have been something helpful. I didn't have it at the time, but something to remember to get light in there. Here's some photos of Here's some photos of me in here. Uh, just a portrait shot that I was trying to work on. I messed up on a few things. The image still turned out okay. Here's the thing. One, there's not enough light on my face. I can edit that in and I'll show you how to edit some of that back in. The challenge is if you don't have the light on your face, don't like look at the camera. I could have looked up. I could have looked to the side. Like there's different kind of poses you could have had that could have given more light on that subject instead of just saying, whoa, I can hardly see his face because it's pretty dark or something. So that's unfortunate. Also, I shot it at 2.0 uh, f-stop, which means a very shallow depth of field, which means what's happening is perhaps my face, whoopsie, perhaps my face is in focus but if you look at my knee, it's not in focus. If you look at my shoe, the tip of this is not in focus. There's just this thin line of maybe a foot or so that's in focus. And the problem is there's, as far as myself, there's probably like, you need like two or three feet of focus uh, in there. And that would be switching out to something like a two point, switching my f-stop to 2.8 or maybe around there, somewhere in there to get find a sweet spot. Because you're still going to get that bokeh with the trees and everything. It's just that you got to be careful to get your subject completely in focus as far as what's important. And in this case, I think there's important stuff in there that didn't get in focus. Now, to brighten up portions of my face, here's what I would do. This is, once again, a trick. Uh, basically going into color, going over to mask. We kind of talked about this before where we were working on removing like a certain color or something like that. Uh, the red in the lighthouse, what you can do is you can select the different parts of the image that you feel are underexposed or that needs more light. And what you can do 
is you can go to more and what you do is there's actually these sections where it says whites and then there's uh, like the darker colors and basically you can adjust that to say hey these darker colors in the image I want to brighten them up and you can kind of bring them back to an extent and you could do that for the uh, the others as well um, so you can bring it back and get something back in there and like I could whiten up my teeth I could brighten up uh, my eyes and it looks better it's not perfect but it looks better you can save yourself at some points but just remember to fix that in the future I'm still working on getting my settings right for photos like this so I'm still working on it but uh, definitely something where a little bit of adjusting can be really helpful uh, as far as cropping wise my head's basically centered in the middle of the image there's some free space on this side I think it's okay um, uh, but yeah so that's that image there I think it's something where people just have to really take a look at what they're taking photos of and realizing camera settings and what um, what really makes the difference there um, so I think that's good um, other images to take a look at we've got this one me just walking around the forest stuff like that we also have this image and I think I have a couple more of this shot too but really what's really cool is just uh, this image here there's this huge bridge you have to drive across to get to where the lighthouse is over in Washington and this bridge with the sunset and the clouds and everything it was just breathtaking the silhouette that's formed on this bridge is really clean really nicely done and just the water everything looks great uh, an image that I probably wouldn't edit very much at all maybe if you're very technical and you're like hey I want to remove this spoke or something you know clone stamp will remove that stuff for you really easily um, you could crop it to different dimensions depending on how you want um, but yeah nonetheless just a really really cool photo and one of those photos where you can't just be like, hey, I took a great photo. It's more like, wow, creation is amazing. You know, God is so cool to give us just these incredible views, uh, you know, many times, you know, each and every day. So then it's something where it's just like, hey, maybe there's a way that I could adjust it to be like, you know, this one, you've got gray and you've got some uh, some sunset, like some just some lighter colors here uh, like some uh, just warm tones in here or you could make it something where it's like this more blue and purple vibe um, and stuff and that honestly is probably how I would edit how I like it that looks actually really cool but yeah definitely take the time see if you can find something that you really like and you really um, are impressed with and you say man I want to capture that I want to edit that to be what I want it to be very cool but yeah, uh, with those different photos there, uh, that's about it. Uh, but yeah, those were just some photos of just a really amazing trip that I was able to be on. If you guys have any questions or any photos that you would really want me to edit more in the future, definitely let me know and we'll uh, tackle that in a future video. But yeah, visiting this lighthouse was a dream of mine and I'm so happy that it happened. You know, follow your dreams, kids. Uh, you never know where you'll end up. But uh, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.